Yeah, welcome back. This is News File. We have some difficulty. We'll resolve that and then we'll uh, go on this uh, commercial break that we have to because this show is paid for. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's just an aside. Some people are talking about my gray hair. <laughs> okay, yeah. I've had gray hair since before I was even 30. I'm now 45. I'll be 45 in, uh, in March. Um, you haven't seen my hair. You have seen me, Sakura. Now you're seeing my hair. All right, so this show is brought to you by MTN Everywhere You Go, Star Assurance, your solid partner, Bank of Africa, strong as a group, and close as a partner. Amen Scientific, God is the healer. Duraplus, where water, Duraplus goes, water flows. In fact, where water goes, there is Duraplus. So let's get to Dr. Baumia and the economy and the NPP's 388 promises, which he says 303 have been delivered. Then, John Jinapo appears to be the one now giving the answer as far as uh, Dr. Baumier's presentation is concerned. So if you thought that uh, Dr. Baumier was the NDC's nightmare and that the NDC never had an answer to him, well, it does appear <clears throat> that now you have someone who will be answering him anytime he comes forth. Um, let's listen to just bits and pieces of what Dr. Baumier had to say, and then uh, John Jinapo also at the, at the dialogue, which was attended by former President Mahama as well. Let's listen to them. We'll be back. We made 388 promises in our manifesto. The most recent validation exercise that we undertook at the end of January 2019 shows that we have either delivered or we are delivering on 78% of our promises. We have either delivered or we are delivering on 78% of our promises. Of course, this 78% 70 is an aggregate figure. You can go to the sectoral breakdown which we provide to show you what we are doing for each sector. How has the CD performed? under the leadership of Nana Adodankwa Akufuado in the last three years? The answer is very simple. You look at this table, which looks at the average rate of depreciation of the city since 1992. Between 1993 and 1996, first term of the Fourth Republic, the average rate of depreciation of the city was 27.95%. 97 to 2000, 25.19%. 2001 to 2004, we drastically reduced it under President Kufour to 11.4%. And 2005 to 2008, the second term, to 6.7%. 2009 to 2012, 10.9%. Under the NDC government of 2013 to 2016, it was 18%. Under Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, it is, for the first three years, 8.7%. So, you see from this table that the city exchange rate under the MPP from 2017 to 2019 is twice as stable as it was under the NDC from 2013 to 2016. The total public debt has increased from 122 billion Ghana cities in 2016 to 214 billion Ghana cities, that is 62.2% of GDP at the end of November 2019. But this includes the cost of the banking sector cleanup, uh, which, as you know, is over 13 billion Ghana cities and counting. 
Excluding the cost of the banking sector cleanup, the debt stock stands at 203 billion or 59.1% of GDP. However, if you look at these debt dynamics, the strong fiscal adjustment that has taken place and better debt management has meant that the rate of debt accumulation has slowed down considerably to the lowest in a decade. Between 2008 and 2012, right, the first 2008 and 2012, Ghana's debt stock increased by 267 percent between 2008 and 2012. Ghana's debt stock increased by 267 percent between 2012 and 2016. Ghana's debt stock increased by another 243 percent. But between 2016 and 2019, the increase has been by 79%. So there's a big difference. So you look at the graph here, you will see that if you look at the debt to GDP ratio, for example, the debt to GDP ratio increased by 49% between 2008 to 2012, increased by 19% between 2012 and 2016, and by 3.9% between 2016 and 2019. I would like to say that even though we have made a solid start, and it is a start, in our three years in office, we are not yet where we want Ghana to be. We have done a lot. We've established the Zongo Development Fund, and all of that, major, major things, but we are not yet where we want to be. We still have more to do. This year has been designated by the president as the year of roads, and the country will soon see evidence of this. We have outperformed the NDC in virtually every sphere of the economy. I mean every sphere. We have appropriately combined economic theory as taught in our textbooks with the collective experience of the economic management team and cabinet under the leadership of the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, in the management of the economy. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, or an accountant who, after qualifying, decides not to use what they learned in school. Say, so forget about everything you learned in the textbooks when you are actually practicing. Can you imagine that? Unfortunately, if you don't take your time and read and understand your textbooks in a subject like economics, you will end up mismanaging the economy with a confirmed economic management techniques. <laughs> I have no doubt that the NDC will come out and challenge what I have said here today. But when they come out, just ask them to bring contrary data. Don't, they shouldn't just talk. They should come with contrary data. You've seen and a decrease in electricity prices. We promised to reduce electricity prices. People thought it wasn't possible. I will take you back because sometimes people tell us we have short memories and we always have to remind ourselves that we will not forget. We will not forget their record. If you look at the record, the data is clear from the table you see. Between 2010 and 2015, in 2010, electricity prices went up in this country by 89%. 2011, 10%. 2012, of course, election year, no electricity price increase. 2013, they gave it to us, 78%. 
2014, 23.36, 28.36%. 2015, 59.2%. This is electricity price increases. We promise that we will do a decrease in electricity price increases. Okay? 2016, of course, there was no increase another election year. But 2017, our first year in government, there was no increase in electricity price. 2018, we reduced electricity prices by 22%. And by the way, this is the first government in the history of the Fourth Republic, first government that has reduced electricity prices. First government. In 2019, we increased the prices by 11%, but when you take the net between 2019 and 2018, in net terms, since we've been in office, we've reduced electricity prices by 10%. In net term. And it has not happened so far for any government in the Fourth Republic. And therefore, it is a promise that we have fulfilled. The question that we faced when we tried to implement this free SHS policy, the question that we faced was if we don't have enough infrastructure, how can we tell? whose child should stay at home and whose child should go to school. Who should stay at home? In response to this challenge, we introduced the innovative double track system as a temporary solution to the problem while we construct new schools to allow access to the internet across public tertiary institutions and senior high schools Government has awarded the contract for the provision of free Wi-Fi to all senior high schools and tertiary institutions. There is so much knowledge. There is so much knowledge on the internet. And we have to allow our senior high schools to access that knowledge. All right, so now let's listen to what the NDC also held, which is the, uh, the dialogue series. Let's listen to that. There were a few reactions also to uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bramia. He makes a bold statement that for the first time in the history of this country, it is only the MPP that has reduced electricity tariffs. <laughs> and, he, and you see, yesterday, if you watch him, he makes that statement and he laughs a lot <laughs> I watched him. I watched the vice president. Anytime he makes this and peddles this falsehood, then he turns around and laughs. So something came to mind. Is this man thinking that we are not serious as a country or what? Because you cannot say this and then turn around and laugh at us at the same time. At least if you are lying to us, be a little bit serious so that we may think that you are serious. And I entreat you to watch the video again. I have the reckoner, and it's the reckoner that tells you how much you pay. The yellow one is July 2016. The white one is October 2019. Check the prices. Check the 150, check the 100, and check the 300. In July, we reduce electricity tariffs. I do recall that Parkwesi and Misata. I remember in July 2016, May he so rest in peace. Chair that meeting. I do recall that minority leader was then Minister for Labor. He sat in that meeting. We computed the issues, came out with a realignment, and reduced tariffs to close to about 20%. Today, I am stating on authority that the tariffs are far higher than they inherited. And so when you look at the table, you would realize that our debt level, that is the debt to GDP, not just the nominal debt, the debt to GDP has moved from about 56% to now 62.25% as a percentage of GDP. Yesterday, Dr. Baumia was in Kumasi. 
telling us that their debt to GDP is better than us. You inherit a 56%, you raise it to 62.25%, and you have the audacity and the effrontery to stand in Otu Mfos Kumasi and tell the people of Ghana that your track record is better than that of John Mahama. I am not surprised, because if the MPP is capable of turning a very fine heart surgeon into a galamsey kingpin, they can equally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if the NPP is able to turn a very fine heart surgeon, a very good man, into a galamsey kingpin, they can equally turn an economist into a crack propagandist who engages in galamse when it comes to statistical issues. Because it doesn't support the fact. All right, so you heard Dr. Baumia earlier and you heard John Jinapo, and uh, but for the almost one hour or so that John Jinapo also spent, he spoke to substantive matters on factual uh, issues where he refers to data as provided by either the Bank of Ghana, the Ministry of Finance itself, and also the PIAC as well. And among other things, very, very interesting claims that he makes. We'll interrogate some of them, including that some 655, uh, is it million or billion? CDs. Uh, billion. Million. Million CDs is unaccounted for, and he suspects that money has been stolen by this government. He will, hmm. he will justify his point to us. That's actually oil money he claims. And then the NDC's point actually is that this government in the period has received in petroleum receipts in excess of 20 billion CDs. But the NDC in jo under John Mahama within four years got six billion CDs. Whilst John Mahama got six billion, he can show what he used the money for. They claim the NPP has got 20 billion CDs and can show what it used it for. He also stated a fact. We are interrogating all of that this morning. That the energy sector also gave the John Mahama uh, government 3 billion. But it has given this government 12 billion says to whom much is giving, much is expected. And yet, the NPP has nothing to show for as far as infrastructure is concerned. So let's begin with um, Gideon. Beyond 303 out of the eight, uh, 388 you know, uh, manifesto promises that have been delivered or being delivered, the health of the economy as the Vice President stated, in the next five minutes, tell us, convince everybody else that they didn't get convinced by Dr. Baumia that these represent the facts, that you are better managers of the economy than the NDC did. Uh, Samson, thank you very much. Uh, let me set out mm. to say that the town hall meeting is part of the plans that government has to engage the people of this country. The president, in his wisdom, believes that when people trust you with their power and their resources to manage, you should be able to account to them at certain points in time. And so this town hall meeting is part of the efforts by government to deepen and promote accountable governance, which is an essential part of our democratic ethos. And so for us, we believe that we need to account to the people give the people the platform to assess us, engage us, and also put the ideas on board because we cannot be seen to be a repository of knowledge. And so we must listen to the people. This is in sharp contrast to what we witnessed a few years ago when Mr. Mahama was in charge. And when it was put to him that we need to compare government records and manifesto promises, he declined and said that any such attempt can be likened to an exercise in mediocrity. Mm. We don't believe in that, and so we felt we needed to give the Ghanaian people the opportunity. The town hall was also an opportunity for the Ghanaian people to assess us 
and we put ourselves on the radar that this is it, this is the commitment we made to the people of Ghana. And we believe that although we haven't solved in totality all the problems of the people of this country, for which no government can do in the, in the four years, we believe that where we have gotten to, we need to present the facts as they are to Ghanaians for them to also make their own judgment. And that is exactly what the Vice President did. In doing so, we tried to assess the performance of this government in three main metrics. The first metric was to state that of all the manifestos promises that we made, the president made in 2016, how many of them have we been able to say, or we can say we have delivered? How many of them are we in the process of delivering that we have not finished? And how many of them in all honesty and sobriety have we not been able to touch at all? This is uncommon of so many of governments, and I haven't seen this in our history before, that a government comes to the people and says that, assess me based on the promises that I made, where I have to make honest admission that truly I made this commitment three years down the line, I've not been able to achieve it or done anything about it, I do so. If you take the metrics that we use, in the first instance of promises delivered, we say that they are promises for which there is a clear, definable life cycle which have concluded and all which though are recurring, its initial implementation can be described as fully delivered. For example, if we take the free senior high school, mm. it is a promise that is also recurrent because free senior high school, the execution is not final. So we started in 2017, 2018, we continue 2019, we are continuing 2020, we are continuing. But its initial implementation has fully been delivered. And so for that, we describe as delivered. Then we have promises that we have started delivering, but we have not completed. And they include those that we have begun the process to deliver on, but delivery is not yet complete. And a classical example of that is the one district, one factory. We started delivering on some of the factories, we are not yet done. And then the last one is spending. If we put everything together, we are saying to the Ghanaian people that we made about 388 promises in the 2016 manifesto. We have either delivered or in the process of delivering a little over 300 of them. And in percentage terms, that comes to 78. That was the honesty that was the kind of opportunity we wanted to give to the Ghanaian people to say that here we are, assess us, make your own judgments about what we have done, and then let's look forward to see what we can do again. As part of the presentation, and we can go to the metrics and then the details later on, but as you said, the Vice President made it clear, the solid foundation that we have built for this country one in terms of the macroeconomy, which serves as the pillar upon which anything else in this country can function. If you have a weaker macro fundamentals, no matter what you do, nothing can be anchored. And so the macro fundamentals are what anchor the economy and put it on a good footing. There is no denying the fact that if you pick Ghana's macroeconomic indicators, which serves as the pillar that holds the economy, upon which we want to enjoy free SHS, upon which we want to have access to good quality hospitals, upon which we want to have access to good water, upon which we want to have good roads. Because look, if you don't have a strong economy that is able to to withstand all shocks and pressures and having issues to deal with uh, uh, revenues not coming and all of that. There's no way you can build the roads, you can pay teacher to any allowances, you can pay nursing to any allowances and do other things you are doing. The totality of what we have been able to deliver, which hitherto in the years that we, we came to inherit, were not delivered, simply suggests something dramatic has happened to this economy. And I did not bore you with the indicators by going through the one by one. The common consensus across board in the country to international organizations and all bodies is that the macroeconomic fund fundamentals as inherited by this government have been significantly improved across all spheres. And the vice president was very succinct when he made that presentation. If we take inflation, where we found it, we brought it to single digits, sustained it. If we take the real GDP growth, 
which more or less measures the size of the economy and shows more or less it's also the scorecard for the health of this economy. We've been able to increase it from the, the, the anemic 3.4% to somewhere around 7%. That is fundamental. That is quite dramatic. If you take the gross international reserves, which serves as the shock absorber to the currency, so that any point that there are shocks, whether exogenous or endogenous, attacking the currency, is able to hold the currency firm and reduce its rate of depreciation, that one has significantly been improved. If we look at trade accounts, fantastic. So all of this box up to give the indication that in terms of the management of the economy, its fundamentals, the indicators that suggest how robust our economy is today, there is none denying the fact that truly this government has delivered on the promise. Okay. Aside this, mm. there are other pieces of the jigsaw that are also being put together and they are coming together. And these are what the Vice President describes as the unwritten rules of the development paradigm. We're talking about the digitization and how this agenda mm. has been able to ease the burdens of the Ghanaian people in so many public services in this country. Okay. If I so have the time, I'll go yeah, to one, we, one, we, one we, we after will, the other. That, that's your introduction. We will come back to Whoa. deal with the issues, hmm. Hmm. you know, uh, hmm. in, in specific spe perspectives. Sure, sure. Because, for example, when you talk about digitization, I, I read the area of digitization and I read about how the courts you know, is being digitized. <laughs> and I am a user of the courts. And I know when it began. And I know the process started. It's not something that you should be taking credit for. You may have come to complete it. Okay. Yeah. Um, when he says, when, when you say this has been delivered, and I went to the delivery.ga.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say, one, you mention an item. Yeah. You, you only mention the name of the item and then you say delivered. Or you mention the name of the item and say being or delivering. Or you mention the name of the item and you say pending. What I want to see is to be able to, you know, click on that particular item that you say delivered. Then I can see the list of the deliveries. For example, when you are talking about one <coughs> district, one factory, you are able to give figures and you're able to tell me where to find which particular factory. But when it's a list and you have delivered, delivered, it's difficult for me. You don't agree? No, no, Sammy, I mean, um, you, you may be right in some part, but in others too, that's, that's not entirely true. So what we have done is to track the manifesto, take the raw data. So for instance, in agriculture, we mention the promise and we give a status, whether delivered, pending, or delivering. And then we indicate the sector that you can find that particular thing. What we have done was to track the manifesto, take the promises, and present to you what we have done on them. You are looking for details as to when we say uh, the we, facts we, backing we, the conclusion. When we say we, we, we promise to build 1,000 boreholes, we should list all the 1,000 boreholes under it, and then there should be somewhere a hyperlink. Once you click it, you see all the thousands. Exactly. That is also a voluminous work to do. But across <laughs> all sectors, <laughs> yes, uh, no, for, for, for this particular, mm. you, you, you must get the objective for this exercise. Okay. The objective was to track our manifestos, give indication to Ghanaian people, give signals mm. as to what we have done with this manifesto promise, delivered pending or what. See, the details yeah. of it are always available, of okay. course. Like we are, it's a suggestion which well, we can decide I, to take I, on board. I need that available to me no as problem. a journalist. Because no problem. you know what? Once I mention this sector, you know the politics. The NDC will say they might not even use a charitable word. They will say it's a lie. So okay. that, and then when they say that, you, you the one interrogating the matter, you do not know what else to say to them. Uh, because I, so, I so, need so, to be able to get to the details. So I think you should yeah, do that. I, I, this, this is a very good thing that helps just, all of us. So what we did, and I think Doc should speak to that, mm. and that's what you're saying. Mm. You deliver or you don't. It's a one or a zero. And then some you are in the process of delivering. Mm -hmm. Honesty means you go and tell us we've delivered up to 60%, 40%, 30%. So we have in our uh, rubric partially fulfilled. And we put a fraction there. 
I think that's what they should do. Yeah, I, 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 I agree no. with Kofi. I mean, yes, yes. And, 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 but, but that's not what I am no, seeking. No, yes. no, no, that, no, that, that, no, that, no, that, no, 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 I want to see the items delivered. So, 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 so you want the actual that items. The exactly. That is the detail you want. And I'm yeah. saying that it is, it is something that we can take it's on work board. work in progress. But, but yes, but what we have done is That's that mm. we have pointed you to the agency or the ministry where this execution has taken place. And so it is always easy to get that data. But I get your point. I get your point. Thank you. We, we, we can decide, no, easy. You get your time. We can decide to saying. augment yeah. what mm. we have done okay. by providing these details that you are requesting for. That is another leg of it that All we right. can decide to do. But the basics of it mm. was to present the Kofi, data I'll come to you. as yes. we have done. And just right. as Kofi said, mm. Imani also did Thank something you. similar. Thank and you. I must commend that right. when we requested for their data, okay. they gave us and we also Thank examined you. it. And Thank saw you very much. Done. So, John, yep. like he started, I asked him to do a sort of an introduction that gives us a picture. So imagine that I was not convinced. I have listened to everything you presented. I have read your statements and your um, PowerPoints. Imagine I was not convinced. In the next five, six minutes, convince me. OK, mm -hmm. thank you. As long as I'm happy that we are trying to contextualize the discussion. Right. Because if you don't contextualize the discussion and get a framework within which you want to discuss, you might be shooting off. Mm. So give us the highlight. We'll get to the First other, of all, the what Dr. Balmia did was to lump some issues together and say 78% either delivered or, or being delivered. You are a lecturer. What is the meaning of that? Tell us what you have delivered. And tell us what you are in the process of delivering and what you've not been able to deliver. At least you'd have then set the proper framework for intellectual analytical discourse. But to just do? tell us that deliver, I'm coming there. You indicated that Zongo Development Fund delivered. What is that? You stated categorically that the Zongos were impoverished. And so you were establishing a Zongo Development Fund with the seed money of 200 million in order to lift them out of poverty, invest in infrastructure, in schools, and in clinics. Then you set up a ministry, put your boys there, and then come to tell Ghanaians that has you have delivered. Been, has it been established? Mm. No, what the, is the no, meaning no of this? And Sorry. I'm happy the the okay, was so you see, please tell me you, see, you must make your presentation in a way that doesn't mm. invite yeah, this intervention. Has it been established? Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, no, but so, but he said we'll a lot there. of things that I disagreed mm. with him. He accused President Mahama. I said President Mahama never did A, B, C, D. I kept quiet. We must have the temperament to allow each other to flow. Stop, people stop pointing your fingers at him. You oh. make your presentation. So something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, bro, I'm sorry if I pointed my... Right. Sometimes I, when I talk the guest, gesticulation... Eh? Mm. <laughs> so you promised the people that, look, I will set up a Zengo Development Fund. What is the object of the Zengo Development Fund? To lift the people out of poverty. To invest in the Zongos. And then once you set up a ministry, you then proceed jump on and say that I have delivered my promise. Was a promise. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is this how we deliver promises? Something I have here. And I, I did some work. Look, this is a compilation of the 2020 report that appeared before Parliament. I have 2017, I have 2018, report of 2019. What? Annual budget estimates for various sector ministries for 2020 financial year. So I've compiled all of them, report of the Finance Committee on the Appropriations Bill and everything. I tried to keep track of it. So let me just use one example. Mm -hmm. Zongo Development Fund, 2017. Not a dime was released. Not even one city. 2018. And I have the figures here, something. I'll give you the figures so that if you want to project it, you can project it. As I speak, I'll give you all the figures that I compiled. Not one person was released for capital expenditure. 2019, do you know how much they released for investment? Seven million. So over the three year period, 2017, 2018, 2019, seven million. The amount they spent even on goods and services, on themselves, salaries, compensation, in order to achieve this infrastructure, was in far much higher than how much they even spent on the Zongos. You spent seven million for over 2,000 Zongos in three years, and then you mount the platform and tell the people that you have delivered. I have another report here. And you see, I'm happy that 
Dr. Baumia is inviting us to speak to facts and figures. Report of the Committee of Employment, Social Welfare, and State Enterprises. Budget Implementation Performance Report in respect of the Ministry of Special Development Initiative. This government promised us that they will give each district $1 million per constituency every year. This is the fourth year. Go and check how much they have released. When I did the total for the whole three years, they have released 47,000 per constituency. <laughs> Interesting. These are your, your figures, not my that figures. Is, that is wrong. So your, your chairman you, here, you, 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 Professor you, Kwame, you, you are getting Honorable control. Kwame Enyimedu Entry, Chairman, Committee on Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises, I, Anthony Ejekum, clerk to the committee. There's a difference this between having the a data and reading and interpreting it as it ought to be. Gideon, sorry, 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 sorry Gideon, 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 hold on, hold on. You cannot mislead. But you see what you just Ghana. read about the one constituency, uh, one million dollars does not account for the ambulance. Yeah. That is a loan. But in that's, part of, that's no, part of no, the one constituency. You don't go. One million dollars. That is why our debt to GDP, our debt to GDP today is 62.25. Oh, no, no. That is why it's moved from 54, based on the 120 million debt they inherited, to 62.25. These are not my figures. These are figures as submitted by the ministry. If the ministry felt that as at this time, by the end of 2019, those monies had been released for them to spend. They should have captured that here. What was the promise? The promise is that we'll make one million available for you to spend. And you are now accounting for your outtakes. This is, look, amount released. This amount released, 331,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, 311 million. 311 million. CDs. John, after making, the promise, you after making the promise that one million will be made available, they explained that they will not give them the money, that they will spend the money through this for. ministry. Exactly. Fantastic. And they are the ones who just delivered, the, who are delivering the ambulance, uh, dams and just ambulance. delivered the ambulance. The toilet facilities. Yes. Yes. Whatever. Toilet facilities what you deliver dams, you deliver whatever, it has to be captured here. No, but this data you are quoting. Stop, please, stop. What's please. wrong with this data? Yeah. No, what's wrong with no, this no, data? No, no, Gideon, Gideon, okay, stop, okay, wait. Fine. This data is wrong. No, I'll John, come to that. Don't this worry. is John, data John, from John, your ministry. John, in a minute, so, in a minute, you see, the purpose of how we have structured, and we, we discussed this even before we came live, that you spend the first five, six minutes giving us a broad so view, do overview no, but he's, he of what, to make my of point. what oh, you are going job. to discuss. No, you haven't done that. <laughs> you have picked a single item, and you, have, you are using you it to consume your, no, your, your whole time. No, I did Zongo Development Fund. He okay. went, and when, once okay. I went to okay. one million mm. per constituency. So the bottom line is you tell us I might have released. Okay, so proceed. Yeah. So let me mm. proceed. Mm. Then the vice president makes some categorical statements about the energy sector. Mm. He makes the claim that they are the first government to have released, reduced electricity. That is false. And I've proven that is false. Because if you go to My Joy Online, it is clearly stated. And I decided to use My Joy Online for all my analysis, as well as the figures. Then the, uh, the tariff you pay today. This is electricity tariff recorder, effective 1st October 2019. This is the latest recorder. And then the one we left was 1st July 2019. If you were to consume 150 during our time, you would pay 88 CD. Today, if you consume the same unit, and I'm comparing apples with apples, you will pay 93 CD. How the vice president is able to determine that from 88 to 93 leads to a reduction can only be a matter of factual inaccuracy. And so clearly, the vice president decided to do what I describe as statistical galamse. He picks figures here, picks figures here, bundle them together, and say that I've achieved 78%. That cannot be done in any intellectual academic setting. This is alien to academic intellectual discourse. You cannot do that. And I'm happy you try to draw him to that level. That look, let us be consistent. Let us be realistic. And then what I, why I said that you can't do this analysis in vacuum. And I'm happy you use the word exogenous and endogenous shocks. If you have shocks, it affects your rate of growth. And he said 3% paltry. In that GDP growth rate, there's the non-oil and the oil. You don't control the oil prices, neither do you control oil volumes. So if your volumes go down, it means that there's an endogenous shock. If the prices go down in the world market, it means that there's an exogenous shock. So it would be disingenuous to just say that, look, you achieve only 3%, I achieve 
When you know that your petroleum revenues doubled or tripled in terms of volumes and even in terms of receipts. So what he did is very alien to the academia, is very alien for any proper discourse. He set his own questions, set his own answers, and went ahead to grade himself 78%. That 78% is nothing but a fallacy of hasty generalization. Interesting. Okay, so you hold it there, but there are substantive matters you raise which will interrogate, as I've already mentioned, uh, some of the monies that you claim are missing, among other things. And I was actually trying to look for the place where the vice president spoke about electricity. You just played I, everybody I him. suspect that there is something he said may have qualified same, but some of us may not have paid attention. I'll look for it and bring it. Okay, so oh. Kofi... And Dr. Texan, the reason you are here <laughs> is so that when these gentlemen, you know, bandy the economic terms mm -hmm. in a way that we cannot appreciate properly, you will assist us. What will be your overview mm -hmm. in five minutes right. of the highlights? So overview, and I like how mm. you put it. Mm. We are trying to get a certain sense of context and make this meaningful. Mm. It is important for us to say that this is a very positive development in governance, okay? That people or the people who run affairs feel a need to come and account to us. And I, I have to blow my own horn here. For eight years, Imani was forcing this thing we call quantification. We were laughed at, but we have persisted for eight years. And what we did is we will force you by going and checking what you've done and telling people, mm. and you'll be forced to come and respond. Now, after so many years of doing it, which we call a manifesto, right. we have a situation now where um, the present government has felt the need to do it. It's a good thing. And I hope when government changes or as they continue, they will continue to give us this. For us who are citizens, now we need to start paying attention. Mm. If they talk about the road in your area and it's been done or it's not been done, now you can speak back and we'll continue to force them to account to us. So mm. that's a very important point. And for that reason, I give the present government and Dr. Baumia kudos. Mm. But they are politicians. And there's a say about statistics, statistics, and damn lies. You can use statistics to do whatever you want to do. So we have to appreciate that. They will seek to put an interpretation on the statistics that favors them, which is why Whatever Dr. Boaku says, you should take, but with a pinch of salt. Whatever the NDC say, oh. take with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Same with the NDC. Okay? And hopefully, those of us in the middle can give you a better um, view of things. So, take for instance how they approach. I won't uh, take with a pinch of salt if they rely on the statistical service, if they rely on the Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. if they rely on the uh, presentations as uh, submitted by the finance minister in parliament and they are, they are without debate, Generally data, so to speak. Yeah. But the interpretation mm -hmm. they put so for us, yeah. for instance, we had a rubric where we said there are promises which have been totally fulfilled. For that, we give one, which is equal to the 100%. Promises that have not been fulfilled at all, we give zero. Most promises are in some states of being fulfilled. So we looked at them and then we gave some sort of ranking based on how far they've gone. So something you're asking for something, let me show mm. you something here, which the public doesn't know. But you see here, so here you see that 0 0.7 here, and we give a link. This is what we are, you are looking for. Yes. The link gives you the further and better particulars. Exactly. Now, I urge Dr. Boakon, and to that extent, I will say that um, they, they, they took what we did seriously, and maybe he will concede that they, no, may, be, they may have learned a few mm. things from us. You know, move from this point to a, a, a more granularity, okay, to do some of the things something is talking about. But in all honesty, one, there were 510 promises. And when we, our report is on imaniafrica.org, you can go and look at it in detail. We show you everywhere the promises are. So we just don't say, we show you where they are, 510. They chose 388. No, coffee. That, that cannot be entirely no. correct. That's why I'm saying you, we show you where they are. There are some promises you broke down, in, broke down them into pieces. Oh, mm. if you say no, no, I will build no. a school and put Wi-Fi in it, 
That's to you one promise. But you take it as two. For us, you build a school, you put Wi-Fi. There are two promises. Yeah, which is why I'm saying data speaks for itself. And that will also mm. inform how mm. you assess it in terms of so the implementation. My point level, is, you which see, may be different from ours. So Joe, I with Joe was trying to tell you something. Then and, numerics can okay, be so, he said, so we cannot get, get rid of the arguments. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm mm. saying, I'm saying, we urge you to go into that level of detail because that is what people need. I appreciate that well, you want information. To. I've just yeah. been informed Hold that on. there has been a remarks session that has been updated on the Thank website. Thank you. So on we the keep website going. now, this moment. Yeah, that is what I've been okay. informed. So yeah. 510 yeah. against 388. And, and then also, to reflect this, this idea of um, we've done it or we've not done it, and then rating something which you are in the process of doing as having been done is sad. And look, if you take, for instance, the ambulances, at the time we were ranking them, we saw them working on them, but they hadn't concluded. We gave a certain ranking. As we speak, you can say they have done it. Point I am making is this. You need, if you really want honesty, to agree that you need to go to a certain level of granularity and give more explanation to the things that you have done, especially the things you have not done, and maybe account for why you are where you are. Mm. And there are things that you have not touched at all. Now, there is also the issue of waiting. Okay, waiting, what, what we mean is that not every promise has the same level of importance. If you are doing governance, for instance, free SHS, for regardless of the merits which sometimes we don't agree on, okay, it's not of the same weight in terms of economic we and social importance, okay, as for instance, domestic airline policy. Domestic airline policy affects a very small, you know, section of our society. So we put weights on these things. Mm -hmm. They didn't weight anything at all. We think that's not the best. Going forward, work towards weighting these things. And these weights, therefore, give you a sense of priority. Okay? We have the roads being done right now. Okay? I like the fact that the roads so are So in terms done. of domestic airline, you're talking about the removal of the 17% VAT they VAT say. on domestic okay. airline. Right. You may have achieved it, but what is the real importance Is it because they are doing their own assessment? If it were the NDC assessing what they have done, mm -hmm. you see... At various places, they talk about removing 17% of that, 17% of that. The NDC would have put all that together and mm -hmm. simply say 17%, not the specific areas, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying But they do that and it increases the number of things they have done. Yes. <laughs> and okay. that is why I'm saying people put an interpretation on the data mm. that suits them. Okay. So whatever we do, everywhere in the world, politicians are prone to doing that. Uh, but we should continue to I push think, back. I, I agree with you, but I think the limitation on the waiting is that it will give people room to be very subjective and decide that for areas mm. that we are doing better, we are caught higher All right. weights. Well, but okay, that, so, that is so, why we so think so the Thank you. Kofi will conclude so the, shortly the and then we'll bring the Dr. Texan in. Yes, I mean, Kofi, those ones can be Kofi that, look yeah. to conclude. Yeah. We think that the discussion is important, but we expect that going forward there will be more detail. Okay? And then also we found something out, and again, Dr. Boakun, that some of the promises that had been made were not um, recorded anywhere. Basically, they had forgotten about them. And I'm trying not to re reveal too much, but we had meetings with some yeah, ministries, yeah. And, and they realized that we were telling them things that had been promised, which they were not aware of, and they realized it's really there because we showed you where it was. Our, I'm looking at the general governance issues. Please be careful what you say, what you promise, because this is our life. Now, know what you've said, and it is our money you are using. It's not everything that we need today. And we worry about promises that are made because ultimately you have to use tax funds to go and do them. So be careful what you promise. When you promise it, note it very well. Now, make sure you can deliver on it. And if you have delivered on it, tell us exactly where you've gotten to and where you want to get to so that we will feel like we really are the ones you are working for mm -hmm. and you are reporting to us. So congrats on this one. But we disagree on a number of things. But it's, you know, a job in the right direction. Right. Thank so, you. Dr. Texan, whilst uh, Kofi Bento says this is a very good thing to do so that all of us as citizens can be part of measuring what has been done. Um, in, I don't know, before you make your own presentation, I don't know what you think. When Dr. Banco, for example, said this is the economic management team, you know, meeting and accounting to the people, so to speak. When you look at the tone of what was done, even in the script, does it not suggest to you clearly that this is setting the stage for election 2020 campaign rather than, you know, doing a state event? And you had the deputy minister of information asking the people to cheer on and say, 
uh, and 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 so on. Is that America. politics or that's, you know? <laughs> I mean, something. The, the good thing is that um, we have a government that tries to account to its people, like Kofi said. Mm. And um, a vice president come to us with statistics to tell us how well they are doing. I mean, whether it's an election year, it's meant to be more of a political campaign strategy. It's refreshing that he's come to us. He said, look, this is what I've delivered over the years. No, because we know to. that this is what he did largely to give the NPP the electoral, uh, electoral majority that they got for yeah. 2016. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he's continued with it to so, try so to... So he's gone back to the same thing, campaign. Yes, but the, the, the good thing that he's no longer in opposition is now putting his government on the line for us to scrutinize what they've been able to do in government, which is good. Because you could have, you could have done this in opposition, but when you come to government, you decide to keep quiet because you don't want to put yourself out there for the scrutiny that we are sitting here today to do, which is very good. And uh, Kofi alluded to that. I mean, for me, what is important is not necessarily the percentage of manifesto promises that have been made. I, I don't really go into much of those promises. For me, what is important, and Gideon mentioned this, is that what has happened to our economy over the last three years? Because whatever promises that are made, if our economy is not doing well, we cannot fulfill those promises. We need an economy to be stable. We need an economy that is expanding. We need an economy that would give promise to investors for them to come in to come and invest. And that, for me, as an economist, as I sit here, is, is the main thing that I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to go into the politics, because once you go into the politics, if you don't take care, you position yourself at one side of the political spectrum, and you know what happens when you normally do that. So I'll leave that to a good, uh, I mean, judgment of Ghanaians. Let me tell you this. <laughs> Irrespective of what you do, the politicians <laughs> listening, they will pigeonhole you in. I, I, yes, I, I don't have any problem so, with that. So please, go ahead and do your job. Okay? <laughs> no, do your job. I, 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 yeah, I'm doing my job, but I'm saying right. I'm not going to the politicking mm. of whether this has been achieved 20% Once you say something that doesn't favor one, I one understand. party, yeah, I, I'm used whether to that. it is the fact, sacrosanct sure, fact sure, sure. or not, I, I, I'm used the politician to that. doesn't care. They will tell that. you you are... NDC or NDC. Exactly. I'm used to that. I've, yeah. I've had that. Okay, so time. ignore so, that and make yeah, your Yeah, I've ignored it, but I'm, I'm saying that my say. concentration is on the economy. Okay. Now, the first thing I did when I listened to him was begin to confront, take his statistics and go and cross-check as mm. an economist and mm. some of you does research. Right. And it's on record that the statistics that have been put there are reliable estimates of whatever he talked about. Okay. As to whether the way he went about it is an issue the opposition has a problem with, they will deal with that on their own. But it is very important to note that our Ghanaian economy is back on track, for me, which is most important. And he, in the initial stage of his presentations, clearly looked at the various sections of the economy and what they've done compared to what has happened in the past. I mean, at times, these comparisons then move us to the level where we begin to do the politicking. I mean, I see governance as a continuous process. So mm. for me, I, uh, it's more of, the government of Ghana has achieved this. But he decided to look at the various periods ever since 1992 mm. and then compare that to what they've done in the... Now, the first thing that came to my attention was the fact that almost all the macro indicators are looking really good for Ghana. And uh, especially if you look at the fact that uh, in 2015, 2014, 2015, you had to run to the IMF because we had issues about credibility, and when your policy is not credible, you don't achieve the results. I mean, because the economic agents also do their own thing. And at times, it will work against whatever you try to do. Now, what is important now is now that we have an economy where we clearly have a government that has committed to fiscal discipline, which is one of the main problems that we've had in this economy over the years. Every year in an election year, we promise to keep our deficits low, we overspend. Mm. And so we have this cycle where we clean up the mess, and then in an election year, we sacrifice everything, and then we start all over, just because we want to win an election. So the Fiscal Responsibility Act that the government has signed on, which means that the government is not going to spend below 5% mm. in deficit, is a good thing. Yeah, and that's an achievement. Precisely, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. So, mm. and like I it always says say- beyond the Fiscal Responsibility Act, there is also the Fiscal Responsibility Council. Yes, the council the as well. I was going to do that. So these are things that we've done that we need to coordinate them. And I always say that 
when they do well, we need to congratulate them. When they don't do well, we criticize them. Like, okay. like we've always done. Mm. And that is a good thing. And that is what we need in this economy. Now, the other issues about the economy that I think that will go through them, like the public debt issue that uh, John has a problem with. Um, mm. That's not denying the fact that, I mean, our public stock of, of our public debt has increased by 76% ever since the NDC MPP took over. But if you look at his discussion of the growth of the debt, that is where there's a contention. Who's discussing? Dr. Mahmoud's discussion of okay. the growth of the debt. What he does in that presentation is to tell you that, yes, our debt was 122 billion when he took over. It's now 240 million. But then, in terms of the growth, ours is lower than what the NEC inherited in 2008 and where they brought us to 2016. And there's, there's no problem with the, the indicators that he gave. So John should go back, I listened to him, he should go back and find out what Dr. Bobian meant that we've done better. What he was trying, I think, he was trying to say was that we've done better at increasing the growth or increasing our debt than you did. Because if you if we move the debt from 26 to 76, that is about threefold. If I move from 122 to 204, it's less than a twofold, so I would have done better. No, from the optics, and for those of us who do not have the kind of mind you have to these things, somebody has spent eight years, and you are comparing less than four years yeah. with this quantum. Yeah. It speaks volumes. It tells me how badly you are doing, and you don't even have a right to criticize that other person no, of no. having accumulated debt. Mm -hmm. No, no, I mean, the, the debt... debt is money. The debt is accumulating. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Okay. We've moved from the 54, we are now at 62.5. So the debt is accumulating. What he sought to do, I, I, I'm saying that when I sit back and I look at his analysis, mm. what he sought to do was to try to explain the extent to which we have grown our debt over the years. Exactly. And he compares it with what was there before. Now, when you come to the quantum of the, of the debt itself, yes, it's, it's a huge quantum. I mean, 92 billion in three years is a lot of money which might even be much more than the NDC left when they left power. But in terms of the percentage of our GDP, there's not much that has changed. And for me, what I, I always say is this. Look, Japan is the world's most indebted country. And, and when I teach my students to develop, I tell them that there are three critical components when you begin to analyze debt to GDP ratio. One, is the economy able to sustain itself to repay the debt? It is not a quantum percentage of GDP that really matters. If my debt to GDP is 20% of my GDP, but that money has not gone into expanding the productive capacity of my economy. So, so the NDC is right. They say you are borrowing to take care of uh, breakfast, lunch, and supper. <laughs> you are not investing. And so that's, that's how wasteful you are being. That's how in most incompetent you are. Yeah, we, we if need, you say they were incompetent. We need to have a discussion of that to look at the the content of the borrowing, what has been useful. Yeah, exactly. okay. And that's not the discussion we are doing now. For All me, right. the discussion is that, mm. supposing our debt to GDP ratio is 62.5%, what, what have we used the money for? Yeah, okay. I mean, that discussion All right. so, is important. So yeah. uh, this is the point where I take my break, and when I return, we get into various specifics and interrogate them. We cannot interrogate all the issues, yeah. but we'll take some of them. There's the energy sector, there's the uh, claims about you know, the approach to slowing the depreciation, the NDC disagrees. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is Newsfile. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I'm going to John and then uh, see if we can quickly clear a number of issues, and then I'll come to uh, Gideon, uh, specific issues, we seek to clear them and then move on. So um, you, you suggest, as I mentioned in your sort of rebuttal, uh, you said that petroleum receipts, uh, six billion uh, Ghana cities was uh, received by John Muhammad, but there's evidence to show what he used it for, that the 20 billion uh, at the end of 2022, Prof, um, Nana and there's nothing to show for. And you said energy sector also, uh, 3 billion is what John Mahama had, and yet 
you can show what he used it for, 12 billion so far under Akufuado, and yet there is nothing to show for it. Uh, tie that in the critical issue that you raised about what you say is unaccounted, and I'm using uh, measured words. <laughs> you said more than that. 655 um, of that money is unaccounted for. How do you justify the claims you make in this regard? Yes, I made that claim. And if you go to the Public Interest and Accountability Committee report, mm -hmm. PF report of 2018, they confirmed this figure. If you go to my joy online, that figure is confirmed as well. And I can give you the references there. So it's not as if Gina Poggers all of a sudden manufactured figures. I dealt with secondary sources. So you go to the document, pick the figures. And they said that between 2017, 2018, 625 million was unspent and cannot be accounted for. We even sat on this at a committee and asked the finance minister. And he said it's gone back to government chairs and it's part of the preceding year, the revenue. He so said, show us that line item. Because in the fiscal tables, they show the line item. And so if you pick petroleum revenues, 625 million, and you didn't spend it, and it went into the next year, and you added it, it must come under ABFA, because it's petroleum revenue, and that must be accounted for. Up to now, that has not been accounted for. You mean you, you are not take... satisfied with the explanation? It's not because it's you were not told issue... that because it was not spent, it went back to chest. It's really wrong, because ABFA monies are accounted for specially. And that is why in the budget, there's a line item for ABA. So there was explanation, except that you are not satisfied with it. That explanation cannot hold because why? this is ABFA money. It is treated as a line item and is accounted for as a line item. And to the extent that you cannot account for that as a line item, it's not been accounted for. And if you said you put it in the budget, show me the line item at the revenue side where that money was captured. If you can show me, the only conclusion is that, been able to do that they so haven't far. been able to do that. If they can do that here, let's go ahead. Okay, so, then I, so, so as, as a legislator representing your people and Ghanaians at large, you have left that at that? I haven't left. I've brought that for discussion. I've brought that up. That's the style I've chosen, and I'm entitled to do that. Okay. I've raised it on the floor. Mm. It's unsatisfactory. I've raised it at debate. Mm. It's unsatisfactory. I've brought it to the public domain. Okay. Let now, us discuss Now, the that. funding that you say has come to the president, and yet, so the president, so to speak, and yet there is nothing to show for it. Yes. You actually went further to suggest <clears throat> that even though you are aware that a chunk of the money as reserved for the purposes of uh, public expenditure has gone into free SHS, once again, you have, you have an issue with that. Once so again. it is not that there's no infrastructure or something to show, but the money has gone into some expenditure that you disagree with. Not me. Not me. Once again, I quote the reference, and every document I quote, I mention the document, the page, and the paragraph. Okay. I refer to the PIAC report, mm. Public Interest and Accountability report, on the management of petroleum revenues for 2017. Mm -hmm. I refer to paragraph 23. In the 2017 financial year, only 37% of the utilized ABFA was used for capital expenditure, less than the 70% stipulated in the PRMA. It's not John Ginapo who is making this assertion. It's a statutory body. This is a report that was made before Parliament. Mm. Parliament is led by the MPP majority. We debated it and adopted it, and even made recommendations to the minister that follow the provisions of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. This is a law at 815-2011 that was passed by Parliament, and Parliament has taken cognizance of it. And so it's not John Gina who is making that. You said that, that the utilization that of revenues, especially ABFA and ESLA proceeds, under this administration has been most disappointing. Uh, uh, the instances you provide, the 2018 financial year, only 49% of ABFA expenditure was used for capital expenditure, while 51% was utilized for the supply of goods and services. A clear violation of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. I've just stated it here. Is it a fact or not? 
Did they use 49% for capital expenditure? That's a fact. Is that the requirement of the law? That, that is, has to be capital expenditure? It says that it's less than the 70% mm. stipulated in the PRMA. Mm. I'm not PIAC. PIAC is a creator of law. And then you look at the revenues themselves. And I gave the figures. If they dispute the revenues, let them state it. We had 71 billion in our first three years. They've had 141 billion. I captured all this from the media budget review. And if they argue, I'll give them the various paragraphs. And I stated, from the petroleum revenues, I stated, and I did a, a chart, and I put this, took this from the Bank of Ghana mm. reconciliation report of the petroleum funds. Mm. These are the figures. What we got, what they got in the, cities. The, in loss, this year. the loss requirement is for the 70% of the ABFA to be used for public investment expenditure, not so. It's not about capital expenditure. We have debated this. They say they have put the, the money into free SHS. That's priority. Sometimes I'm not debating free SHS. I organized a program. Mm. I made copious quotes from a public document, okay. which is before parliament. If the MPP had issues with that, and they believe that when you say investments, it refers to goods and services, and investment does not refer to investments that are multi-year, they should have debated that. This is not the forum to even engage me because I'm quoting from a secondary source. Mm. So I cannot even be a subject for debate. The law says, then, the law says for any financial year, that's uh, section 21.4, any financial year, a minimum of 70% of the annual budget funding amount, that's the ABFA, shall be used for public investment expenditure consistent with long-term national development plan. Long-term national development plan, that is it. So yes. if they have a debate, they should deal with PIAC. Then I, I looked at the revenues so, themselves. So if PIAC is, is wrong, would you take that to accuse and indictment? I don't hold the fact that PIAC is wrong. I hold investments in public expenditure to mean that you do it and it will have a long-term benefit in terms of real investment. And parliament debated it. Okay. I, I'm not the only person who debated it. Mm. They have majority in parliament. Right. The speaker and, is and, from the MPP. The, the leader is from energy, the MPP. Briefly, on the matter of energy too, you say that the vice president was peddling falsehood. Oh, when, I've stated, I've cleared the air. Well, that yeah. is not true that they are the only government that reduced tariffs. The evidence is here. I've used the record to let you know that his claim that the tariffs today are lower than before they came is false. This is public record. This is not my opinion. Mm. And I've brought the data here. If he has figures... That shows that what I'm saying is and contrary. That they ended Let so us deal with that. They've, they've the vice president himself so. claimed in 2016 that we had ended Dumso. But you see, the issue of ending Dumso is not for me or the MPP to determine that. They are statutory bodies. How can you leave that to politicians? Go and look at what Gritko said in February when they indicated that we've had enough reserves now and that Dumso was over, but they were monitoring the system. In February of... Since February 2016. Okay. Since then, they never declared load shedding. So it's not even a subject matter for political debate. I don't see why we debate everything political. But I have some key issues, mm. something quickly. Okay. Because those issues are very uh, important. Which issue? Just, just tell Revenue. me. Give me the list. Reven no, I'm just giving you some outcomes. Okay. Because these are macro figures I wanted to do. I, I need you to deal with just one. One minute or two to, minutes. I'll go Look, to Gideon. Yeah. Mm. Over the years, mm. we have spent as a percentage of GDP, capital expenditure, 4%. MPP has done maximum 1.6, 1.5, 3.1. When you strike the average, it's just about 2%. So whilst we did 4, they did 2% in terms of capital expenditure. And so if you look at analytical sectoral analysis, construction sector, we were growing at 8.4%. Today they are growing at minus 8.4%. Agriculture sector, by the time we we're leaving, it was 3%. The latest budget now is 2.6%. If you take electricity, we're growing at an asset rate of 4%. Today, it is 0.5%. If you take our national debt, like we said, from 54, we are now doing 62.25. If you take the manufacturing sector, we're growing at 7.9. Today, it's 6.5. If you take currency depreciation, by the time they took over office, the dollar to the city was 9.6. We appreciated with the pound, and then with the euro, it was 5%. Today, if you read the latest MPC report of 2020, the dollar to the city is about 13%. I prefer a 9% depreciation to a 13% depreciation. I prefer a 5% depreciation of the city to a 15% depreciation against the pound. Finally, the financial sector. And for me, this is clear for me. Financial and insurance sector growth. When we were leaving it for office, it was 8%. Today, despite the so-called reforms, it is 1.8%. Private sector, credit to the private sector. 
during our time, it was 14.4%. Today, if you read the 2020 budget, it is 12%. Let anyone take these figures that I've provided, dispute them, or say that, look, these figures you are quoting are not wrong. Okay. All these are figures so, from the budget. Gideon, how do you respond, starting with the agri sector, for example, where and this construction manufacturing sector that he refers to, where there is negative growth? from the statistics that he uses, which he the says budget. he's taking from the 2020 budget. And yet, when you look at what Baumia did, it's, it tells a completely different story. <laughs> Samson, I'm quite uh, surprised. And I, I, to be honest with you, John, the figures you are putting out, they are all wrong. So can please, I please, 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 no, no, stop. Please, Hold coming. on. No, but no, please, no, 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 please, 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 Agriculture growth, what are you talking about? That you left what? You left 2.9%. In 2018, agriculture growth was 6.8%. And 2019 was projected at 6.4%. Mm -hmm. Where is he getting the 2. something Good. percent so from? Okay. So, 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 he says it's the uh, 2020 budget. W what is he talking Is he talking about? A growth figure for a particular quarter or okay, what? So, I mean, I don't understand. So, locate, so that, locate that, 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 that is the problem. I've I mean, seen this thing. <laughs> yeah. And he's and talking about depreciation today of 13%. Today, the CD has appreciated against the dollar by 3.5%. Over what yeah. period? Over yeah. period. No, no, so no, no. That's what no, I'm saying. I'm saying the 2019. Please, 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 hold on. That's Please. When you want to make reference to 2019 budget, say such. Don't say today. When you say today, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Today, the city is the best for performing currency against the dollar globally. Mm -hmm. It is appreciating. You can't come and sit here and throw figures away just for the sake of communicating. That is not right. Look, you said a lot of things here that are untrue. You said that Baumia said you didn't end doing so, and, and, and he's a liar. Look, go to July 2016. A statement that was uh, made on by... On this platform... I have not allowed anybody to use. He's a liar. Okay. Mm. Okay. Who's, go, who's to, you? Go, go to July so, 2016. So I'm just a statement so. that was mm. made by ECG workers and published on Ghana Web. They were complaining about doing so. That's false. Oh, please, please, mm. please, I'm coming. You sat here and also said that you did not reduce electricity prices and that when Vice President Bamiya says that it is only this government since 1992 that has reduced electricity prices, that is not true. And you made reference to my job online story. Read that story letter by letter and very well. There was no point in our country that time that electricity prices were increased and affected the people and it was reduced. There was a plan to increase electricity prices. There was public uproar and the government came and backtracked. That is what happened. Electricity prices never increase and reduce during your period. And so the statistics the vice president gave really speak to the data that you increased electricity prices by 89% in 2010, 10% in 2011, 2012 election year, so sophistry and wit, uh, wise as you were. You decided not to increase it. 2013, after you won power, you increased it by 78%. 2014, 28.36%. 2015, 59.2%. 2016, again, election year, you never increased. It presupposes implicitly that really if you had one really power in 2017, you're going to increase it. This government reduced electric, didn't increase electricity really prices really in 2017. 2018, reduced it cumulatively by 22.8%. And 2019, reduced it by 11.1%. By when you net it off, the cumulative and the net effect on the electricity prices is a reduction. How and that is uh, please, and this that is, is what figure, and that is what the vice president check. is talking about. Now you make you reference. You make, you make reference to no. you make reference to how much a 150 unit of electricity was costing in 2016 as as 88 cities. Yes. And today it is costing 93 yes. cities, and you don't understand. When the vice president talks about percentage changes in no the electricity, changes. I'm coming. In the electricity prices, he's more or less talking about the inflation on the electricity prices. Please, electricity. John, inflation John. is the persistent increases in prices. <laughs> a reduction in inflation does not ultimately mean that prices will not go up. What it means is that prices will go up by increase at a decreasing rate. That is the understanding you need to get. Now, between that period, if prices for 150 units of power had gone up from 88 to 93, what is the difference in nominal terms? If five Ghana cities. If somebody who has net, in cumulative terms, reduced electricity prices by 10%, is increasing by, 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 by five cities in nominal terms over a three-year period, it means that 
you that increase electricity prices cumulatively by 82.5% in three years, we would have been buying the same 150 units of power from that's you at 175. That, See, wrong that is simple that proportion. That is a wrong assumption. That is simple proportion. That you inflate the gas processing plant. No, what do you mean? No we are talking about the net effect on the consumer. Assumption. Please, I'm coming. We are talking about the net effect of the consumer. Okay. In three years, we have increased in nominal terms electricity prices for 150 units of power for five Ghana cities by reducing it in net terms by 10%. For you, that in three years increased it by 85 point something percent, we would have been buying the same 150 units, 175 Ghana cities. That is the contrast and the difference you need to appreciate. Now he goes on to talk about the PIAC report. Mm. And look at the interpretation John puts on the PIAC report. The PIAC report simply stated that the amount of A2 says Point six five million of ABFA um, allocation was utilized, leaving two five five. If you add that to the twenty seventeen figure, you get six six five million. Then he says here to say that that money is missing. Nobody can account for it. Who told you nobody can account for it? What you understand, you should understand, and you know. He knows very well that the oil money does not all come in the same time. Some come and some come in the preceding years. So when it is not captured in the previous years ABFA. The Petroleum Man Management Act is silent on how it is treated. Government can decide to treat it in the next budget, how? not under ABFA. How? That is, that how? is it. How? That is law? it. And Which that was how. You to no, do that? I'm, I'm referring you to the law. Which law? I am Who referring you to the law. I'm, I'm, am I referring you to the law? Who the same Petroleum Management Report. Act, Who, what that you're talking about. That says you can do that. Okay, oh, that John, is what I'm John, talking about. Mm. It's the same thing, and it is silent on that. So government. No, that is what the law says. You are a member of parliament. Tell us how you did it. The, the, the law is we silent on that. The law way. is silent never. on that. So government decided to treat it not under ABFA, but in, into the, the mainstream budget. And you're saying you can't find it. You're a member of parliament. Government is telling you this is why we put it. You say you can't find it, and you are keeping quiet in parliament. You are not reporting. You are not taking any action. What kind of action, uh, work are we doing here as parliamentarians? That is what you need to understand. Then he goes on to talk about another matter. Well, in his press conference, he says that ABFA and ESLA process under this administration has been disappointed, the management of it. You talk about the 49% of ABFA in 2018 financial year and the subsequent 51% that we cannot see. And something referred you to the relevant portions of the law. When we talk of public investment, it does not necessarily mean capital expenditure. That is the understanding we must get. Public investment does not ultimately mean capital expenditure. And therefore, Free SHS is public investment. Even if you go down to read the session three of the law, it itemizes things that can be included within that framework. And it talks about service delivery in education and science and technology. All of these are captured in the law. Yet, you will blind your eyes, you wouldn't see it, and then Say you throw it to the majority. You, I'm That's saying it to you. Report. I'm saying it to you. You, you are saying to it. To the majority. You are saying it. They said it in you, the report. You, you have that you didn't meet the PRMA law. Listen, you have decided, have you you have decided to misconstrue it. No, but you, I ask you the same exactly. question. Yes. That, that if this is what PIAC is saying, you would know the law and you would see the specific portions. Are you not? Entitled to disagree with them. Yes, if and they I'm were saying wrong. we debated it there and mm. came to conclusion that based on came, the PRMB law, came, came to what conclusion? All right, so came, we're talking of came, came, to that, came, came to what conclusion? Um, so I mean, the point ah, I want to make, okay. the point I want to make to right. John is yeah. that when you want to deal with data, deal with data in a way that 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 people may attach some credibility to the, it. The, the we, global picture he gives is convincing that uh, petroleum receipts. You know, in excess of 20 billion that Akufuado suit the government is getting. John Mahama got only six, six billion. First and foremost, then he refers to energy sector, look. where we are talking about three billion for John Mahama and 12 billion for President Akufuado. I'm, I'm very certain in my mind. I'm too very, much has been I'm, given, I'm, yet very little I'm, has I'm, been I'm seen. very certain in my mind that our listeners and our viewers will take whatever data John has put here with a pinch of salt, based on this, what, what I've said In here. your mind, so, so, you, so, what have you disputed? So, so, so no, he can bandy around here? figures. Mm. I, I've, I've disputed a lot Which of one? figures. We are quoting a great figure. You are getting mm. the great figure is yeah. here. Oh, my friend, it is not true. OK. It is not true, okay, John. So, so I'm Where taking a break here. John, John, still continue looking for the agriculture figure. And then we'll come to see whether, in fact, it was growing at a, it was at a negative gra uh, growth or not. It grew at 7.3%. No, 7. 7. 7. 7. Yes. Okay. Source. All right. All right. And what's your source? DSS.
the, the, the minister's budget. Yeah, the budget. Okay. We will go there. So, so, we will right. go there. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'll take a break. I'll be right back. All right, so you're welcome back. This is News File. My guests, uh, Dr. Ebo Texin, uh, Dr. Gideon Boako, John Jinapo, and Kofi Bento. And in 30 seconds, uh, Gideon, and your very final uh, take here. Uh, the question of the doom, so you cannot claim to have ended it. And I'm making a reference, one, just one reference. Um, on the 29th of um, February 2016, uh, candidate Akufuado made a presentation at the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And among other things, this is what he said. He said, the president, referring to John Mahama, wants us to give him credit for resolving Dumso, which was caused by economic and financial mismanagement of his government. So how can you expect credit for resolving a problem that you have caused, which has inflicted such a high cost on the nation? What would be the case if the resolution turns out to be temporary? Would the president accept blame? So... I think we can all accept that you didn't end do so. Some say it is not true. There is this that I wanted to refer you to where President Mahama had also said that do so is not over yet. And uh, I'm just opening the link to give you the exact date, mm -hmm. okay? No, 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 please. I, I gave you 30 I, seconds. I, we have actually run out of time. And then, and then I made reference to the ECG oh, workers' okay, statement that they, okay. they, they, no, they, they made. Do, do, this, do, one do, do, this one is April 2016. This is President Mahama, April okay. 2016. He Interesting. says, Dumso is not over yet, Mahama. Read so, it. No, please. Is that a heading read of a story it. or the story, read a, it. a quotation? I've read the story. If read, you have time, I can read the story to you. Do you understand? So this is a man. Yeah, Dr. Texan, whilst we are at the break, whilst we are at the break, we are trying to resolve the question of the figures for our great sector and things. Is it, is it really the case, as uh, John, John uh, suggests? Yeah, John, John was quoting our terms for the first two quarters of the year in 2019, 2019. compared to 2018. But we, we, ha we knew in the budget that the projected uh, growth for that sector was, um, we expected agreed to grow by 7.3%. Even if... Even if it doesn't yeah, grow by, yeah. by, that, by that amount. And, and currently, because at the time, so, so the budget. He's right. Oh, no, 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 he's not right. He's right in terms of the quarterly comparison. Okay. First but, two quarters. Right. Thank you. We need to yes, discuss yes, 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 Kofi. Yes. We have to talk about third quarter. Yeah, yeah, Kofi, Kofi. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we have to talk third quarter. Very finally. Yes. What do you also have to say? Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. We're not talking about first two quarters. What does data for third quarter? What do we make of all the things that they say when we know, for example, about how uh, Standard & Poor's has upgraded Ghana's sovereign cre uh, credit ratings from B uh, minus to B uh, stable. Yeah. Um, I am know, interested in yeah. how people feel. Mm. It is a fact that in the first quarter of this year, the dollar is one of the best performing currencies. Right. Now, that's a good thing we must be happy about. Something mm. led to that, and that is good management. Okay. I hope that can be sustained. It All means right. a lot for us to have that macroeconomic stability. Okay. Another issue which I, I know there's no time, but look, we are, in, in we are 2009, yeah, we, we wrote that we should manage our oil revenues under an oil revenues commission. Okay. That Thank is what you. became PIA. We Thank should you. go back to that. Thank you. Uh, can you say something in just... Okay, I'm sorry, but we have run oh, out of oh, time. We are unable to say anything any further. Uh, it's very fair to oh. you. You had sufficient time to deal with the issues. My guests have been oh. Dr. Ebo Texin, Dr. Gideon Boako, John Dinapo, and Kofi Bento. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. We'll come your way again next week with another edition of News File. Thank you. <laughs>